area. Yep, we are live. Welcome, Amen. welcome, welcome today. Welcome to your Everything Real Estate podcast. Um, today we have with us um, our um, um, Clara Lyons Devon, <laughs> um, broker of Lions View Realty. She'll let you know, uh, tell you a little bit more about that. And um, just wanted to let you just to go a little bit, tell you a little bit about why and what we're doing and who, who and what Everything Real Estate is about. Everything Real Estate is your platform and your place where you can come and technically just learn everything real estate. Share your views, learn, pick up anything, any question you ever had that you ever had about real estate, you'll be able to come here. And we want to just inform and be an information source for our community and for the public, especially with the um, in light of the climate that we're in and the things that we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, so everything real estate is your home and your place where you can come and get all the any all and any information real estate related. So a little bit about myself. Okay, um, I'm going. I'm just going to just come in and just bring on Clara and she can tell us about who she is and where and what. So Clara, if you don't mind, go ahead and tell us about the business. I don't know what just happened. Tell us. I can see. Okay. You can see? Okay. Uh -huh. um, my name is Clara Lyons Devon and I am the broker owner of Lions View Realty. We are a full service real estate agency. We provide uh, real estate services for residential, for commercial uh, small businesses and nonprofits and property management services. And um, I've been in business since 1996, long time. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, that says a lot. That says a lot. That says something. Yeah. You must have because that's you're gonna have to tell us what your secret sauce is. That's what secret sauce is and what what you do, what you've done to um last in this up and down business for so long. So we'll um, get to that. So okay. yeah, go ahead. You wanna uh, share uh, so to now or you want yeah, to you can, well I wanted to just tell you what do you tell us what do you do? Um I know also you're president of um, past president of your chapter, right? Tell us about NARAB and what that is, a little bit about yeah, who you I are. And president of the Southern New Jersey chapter of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. I was president for four years and now I am board chair. I'm still providing, you know, information and, uh, and leadership. Still president, no. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, our new our new president is, is Avery Ruff. He's a phenomenal right. guy. Yeah, yeah, we have a great, Avery. yeah, he's a good guy. Great, great board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I know and, how it is. And I've actually been involved with NARAB since wow. Uh, while I was in California, I was uh, involved with the California chapter there. That's where I got my start. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you a funny story. I was in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know about NARAB at that time. So I was there on vacation and I saw these people partying and having a good time, all these Black people. I'm like, who are these folks? And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, we're, we're with the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. that yeah. had I, I, I had no idea that was going to become my future. <laughs> wow. yeah. I know about that. <laughs> so, sort of like real estate. I never thought I would be getting into real estate. I never had a desire to be in the real estate. Never thought I would be sitting here and definitely not in real estate instructor or anything. I got into it, you know, just because of my own real estate properties I wanted to manage and wanted to make sure I was doing right by that. But, you know, after getting into the school, taking the class, I saw that it was more, more of a business class than just real estate. But the same thing happened to me with NARAP. I went there and, you know, and been there ever since. So it's definitely the best kept secret 
as some would say. <laughs> indeed, know. indeed. And, and you've definitely been a help for me and an inspiration in uh, getting Lions View Academy up and going. Uh, so that's the coming soon. Uh, yeah. For, Tell yeah, us about that. Yeah, Lions View Academy is our education component. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be, we'll be definitely offering, um, what do you call it? The school for pre-licensing mm -hmm. and for people who are pre-licensing, continuing education. And actually under the academy, there'll be other courses as well. So I'm actually developing a platform for my agents uh, within mm -hmm. that platform as well. So that's some of the things we've been talking about offline. Yeah, but, you we know, have been. Yeah. yeah. So we definitely, that's where it's going. So you're kind of ahead of the curve. You've always been ahead of the curve. Always. Oh, definitely. So yeah, so ahead of ahead of things. So, so what is what? Um, just wanted. To, what's your? So how are you dealing with the COVID nineteen um, pandemic as it relates to your business right now? How any best practices or, or how are you dealing with it as it relates to your business? I just stop. Here. Yeah, it's definitely a strong impact. So you know, where I am in New Jersey, we are staying home. Um, mm -hmm. And for those instances where my agents are going out, uh, the direction is no open houses, uh, only go into houses that are vacant if you, you know, absolutely have to go. Mm -hmm. uh, transactions that are in process, it's about, you know, keeping that physical distance, you know, between you and your client. You know, I advise if you can, uh, especially for inspections of the house is vacant, just sit in the car, let the inspector in. You know, of course, we've always operated under cleanliness. So I always yeah. keep hands out in my car. I always wipe mm -hmm. down the door and the lock boxes. That's just been me. So that's not mm -hmm. anything new. Right. Um, but it's an environment in terms of the interaction with other people. And so trying to keep that to as much of a minimum as possible. Yeah. Anything yeah. that you could recommend to an aid to agents that are struggling right now that you know, um, we know a lot of changes are taking place. We're going to see a lot more. We have been seeing a lot more of this type of um, platform. More individuals are doing stuff um, online. You have any uh, secrets or secret um, tips you want to give to agents that may be struggling that they should be looking towards or should be looking to do if they plan to stay in real yeah, estate? This, or, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything is about relationships. This is yeah. a relationship business. Yeah. And this is a great time to reach out to past clients, people that you think you might want to be clients and just be in communication, you know, reach out, call them. You know, our uh, pastor and bishop always say people don't care how much you do. They care how much you care, you know. Mm. So it's just an opportunity to re reach out to people, see how they're doing. Um, any resources that you might have that you can share the, you know, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers is downloading information to us all the time. Right. Yeah, um, no. Get information available to people that you know and love. Your point. Uh, you know, keep in touch. There's a lot that's happening daily in mm -hmm. the lender market. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I'm doing similar to what you're doing is having a platform like this one where people can get information. We just did a session on insurance. So- um, Let everybody uh, know your platform name also. Once you're oh, done with thank statement. you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Financial Fridays is the name of the platform. And Financial Fridays airs Facebook Live uh, 9.30 a.m. on Fridays. And mm -hmm. you can go back and catch the replays of previous shows. But the last show was about insurance. And- gotcha. Yeah, a lot of people just need to update their beneficiaries. If they're not properly mm -hmm. insured, they need to get insured, especially in this climate, you know, people being incapacitated and also people making transitions. So just so for for what I'd recommend the people in this client is be a resource, you know, yeah. provide the information that people want about, you know, mortgages, what's going on with that, what's what's going on in the lending industry, you know, anything that be of service to your client. Yeah. Makes sense. And I watched that insurance um, broadcast. That was packed with full, full of information, a lot of tips. And um, and I think, do you think that, um, what's your thoughts on um, the insurance and 
as we as a people are under utilization of it? Do you think we utilize it or can utilize it? What's your thoughts on insurance as it relates to, to Black American and Black? Yeah, I think we're underinsured. I think yeah. people um, don't see the value. I know when I was in my 20s, I didn't. I was like, you know, when I check out, I'm not going to be here. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> you know, it, was very, it was a very selfish, you know, mm-hmm. not uninformed uh, right. perspective. But having lived a little bit longer, I think that people need to invest, you know, that minimum monthly amount to at mm-hmm. least be able to uh, not put a burden on family, you know, when that's So when you say time. minimum monthly amount, our viewers may not be aware of what that is because uh, they it's, that was that was a new one that was very yeah, that was good on yeah, this show it's not expensive but it's different depending on what type of insurance package you have what i would recommend is you can do a consult with an insurance agent and they can go over what you need because it's based yeah. on if it's for you if if it's for you and a family of three a family of five you know the dollar amount that you want that policy to be for you know uh, if if it's a term policy, which means yeah. you know you pay into it for a certain amount of time, and you know you're you have say twenty thousand, fifty thousand dollars available, that might be for like a burial plan, or if it's a full life policy, which you know you pay on until you transition, and there there are different types of benefits associated with that. The universal um, she talked about, which is you can have an annuity tied to it, which means you can pull money out. You know, mm-hmm. you can do it for other things. So insurance is very fluid. And I remember when I bought the house, when our my husband and I bought our house together, uh, they sent the the mortgage company sent me a, a plan for an insurance to pay off the mortgage in case. Yeah, they used happened. to do that. It used to be. Yeah. They used to all, always come with those. I, I, I don't see them lately anymore, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I just kind of said, oh, toss it to the side. I thought this is not something I'd never need, not knowing, you know, that my husband was going to pass early, you know, wasn't mm-hmm. something that was expected. And mm-hmm. that would have been great to have, you know, my mortgage paid off and not have to worry about, you know, um, dealing with that aspect or, you know, yeah, dealing with that aspect. So insurance is very important. I think right. people... Uh, don't take it as seriously as they should. Yeah. No, I'm sorry for your loss. And two questions I had wanted to ask you about. Mm-hmm. I think I was here and maybe I thought I heard her mention about um, the monthly policy should equal your expenses now. As you did, did I hear that correct? Was something that the policy that you get should yeah. kind of equal what you're spending or something else? And that was just that was the that was the, the, the takeaway I kind of want. I've never heard that before. Never heard that take on yeah. insurance um, before. Yeah, if you, can journey, so, you should have six months saved, and if you don't have six months of living expenses saved, insurance definitely is a good solution yeah. because, at a minimum, the policy should be you know six months to a year of what it would take for you to, um, you know, live without income. Yeah. So where do you where do you do your business at? Where are you located? Where's your office? And where do you do? Um, my office is in Southern New Jersey. In, South Jersey. Uh, yes, yeah. in Pensacola, yeah. uh, predominantly serves uh, Camden County, Burlington County, Gloucester County, uh, Salem County. But I do uh, real estate across the United States. Actually, absolutely. Yeah, we nationwide yeah. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 absolutely. You can do real estate in, in every every state with relationships with people such as yourself who are who are in other places. So yeah, yeah. that's good. Um, a lot of people don't know that. That's why I want to you know. So we can do real estate, you know, with relationships. Um, and NARAD definitely affords us that opportunity and networks and relationships mm-hmm. all across all across the country, you know, and Mm -hmm. um, um, seasoned professionals that definitely are proficient in their craft, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, So why do you do what you do? So why do you do real estate? What is it? Why do you do what you do? Wow. I started real estate because I had a love of houses. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't been a a real estate person, I probably would have been an architect. You know, yeah, I just love the way uh, 
you know, the structure of houses, the flow of houses, the functionality of houses. You know, I say houses are, are they're like our second skin. You know, they house our secrets. You know, they house our memories. They just um, hold a lot of uh, joy. They hold a lot of memory. You know, houses are like our, our DNA. Mm -hmm. in a sense. You know, they're the DNA of how we live and they represent who we are at different points in our time in time that's one aspect of it and the wow other that's neat. Is, mm -hmm. i love people you know that's i really have a combination. Heart. Hmm? No, I have a heart. combination service yeah i really want to help and educate people and i truly truly believe that uh owning property is the base of wealth you know that's a fact that's a yeah. fact that's a yeah. fact and if you can mm -hmm. rent you can really own. do that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The more people um, we can help do that is just it's just a blessing, you know. No, no doubt. No, you preach it to the choir. No, it's about service. No, for sure. It's about mm -hmm. service and you know, um it's a joy to see people um benefit after, you know, um first thinking that first um especially when they think that they can't do it and yeah. then getting into the process and they realize that, you know. That if you can rent a property, you can definitely own a house. And then when you, you know, go through that experience, because sometimes it get a little rough. You know, I find that, um, you know, uh, the paperwork of the business is the easy part. You know, it's managing expectations. You know, it's managing the expectations of others is what we find ourselves doing more of. I know, you know, and getting getting across those hurdles, you know, and um, you find yourself being more of a counselor and you yeah, know, helping that's... people to get through the other side of it, you know, it's, yeah. sometimes it can be a bumpy road and a rough journey, yeah. a little yeah. bit. Definitely, definitely my ministry. You were asking me earlier, what's my secret sauce? And yeah, mm -hmm. my secret sauce is ESP, which stands for expertise, mm -hmm. service, and patience. Wow. And one of the key things my clients always tell me, they're like, you are so patient, you know, because sometimes it takes a while to get people from the start line to the finish line. And that's always my objective is to get people from the start line to the finish line. And that might take a month, three months, six months. Sometimes it takes years, you know? So my clients, I feel are my clients for life, you know, that we do uh, what we need to do to get them mm -hmm. together. And that's one thing I love about the National Association of Real Estate yeah. Brokers because yeah, so many tools that we're given through our organization to equip us to be empowered to help people. Absolutely. So now you was the press past. You are the past president we talked about yes. earlier. So what? What? Um, just so that our, our listeners can get a, a little bit of better of an understanding of what what NAREB does. You know. So what? What was your highlight as your president? What was the? Well, first let me ask you what what um what was your plan? As your presidency, what was your plan? Because, you know, we all go come in with with a plan. You know, we had a plan that we're going to do. You know, what was your plan as a presidency? And um, as you, when you when you took office or when you took the reins, what, what was your objective? Um, what was it? Education for South yeah. Jersey. Education? Yeah. Education. Yeah, we, we did a lot of phenomenal um, educational workshops and seminars and really elevating home ownership, you know, to a different level, which is also the the mantra, so to speak, for my company. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that we did a little differently, I think, or that was kind of a focus for me is community, community work. So mm -hmm. we partnered with um, Junior Achievement. You know, we actually went and taught the Junior Achievement curriculum in the elementary schools for financial literacy. You know, we what is that? What is that? Achievement. Yeah. yeah. Junior Achievement is an organization that focuses on financial literacy for K through 12. Nice. And, yeah. And so they gave us the entire package and we actually went in and taught classes for kindergarten through, I think it was like third to sixth graders for, you know, two, two, three of the years that I was president. And um, it's a really excellent program. We also partner with Habitat for Humanity, mm -hmm. where went out into the community, cleared an entire lot of debris in Camden City one year. 
uh, we went back the next year and planted a garden. You know, tell me there's the house there now. Yeah, <laughs> is it? No, it's That's actually it. a garden. Yeah. It's a community oh, it's a garden. garden. Yeah, we went to houses and um, actually did painting. Uh, we got people into the program for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, some of our clients. So, uh, you know, so that was community. We partnered with the um, National Coalition of 100 Black Women um, and did a couponing session in our community development day that, you know, we do as part of Realtors Week. So I think um, the special twist uh, mm -hmm. that I brought to the Southern New Jersey chapter of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers is just my love for the community and for um, us being seen and, mm -hmm. and being in the community. Um, overall, in addition to what we provide for our membership in terms of education to empower them, you know, for their clients. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's a, the, the uh -huh. um, education piece is very, um, I didn't know that they do, did that, that we have that similar here. I'm a, I have an incubator at a school, it's a K through 12 school, and that's the plan where we teach. So I get a group of um, elementary students that we get to um, share information about real estate related and finance so it's a whole incubator of the business community at large and real estate happens to be one component of it and then we have a, the, the the seniors we get to do a little bit more hands-on with them and they become like interns and you know we get them for a few months out of the <clears throat> um a semester and they come in and learn real estate and see if it's something that they want to um be a part of i think it's a strong um it's very strong that 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 that's, that's powerful that that's done because if um, they get, our younger elementary students get the seed planted at a young age about wealth and understanding home ownership at a young age, I really believe that it will go much further, you know, when they get older. Yeah, I um, agree with you on that. I had an opportunity to, um, there's a program in Canada called Dream Dream mm -hmm. Works, Dream Builders. I might be messing it up, messed up the name. But anyway, mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's a uh, Keith Davis, Pastor Keith Davis, has a program called Harambe, where you go in and you read to the young people. And one of the things that um, I shared to them after the reading was that you know, real they were asking me what is real estate, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, real estate is a lot of things. It can be intelligence, Very you know, much intellectual a whole lot of things. Absolutely. What's between your ears, that's real estate. You know, people no, cannot get your knowledge from you. You own that, right? Mm -hmm. They're buildings, you know, like all the stores that you see, because a lot of people are not into commercial, but the McDonald's, the, you know, Targets, the Walmarts, all of that is real estate. And, Absolutely. you know, then there's residential, that's real estate, your craft, you know, mm -hmm. that's real estate. So you have the intellectual real estate as well as the physical, um, the physical real estate. And I think, you know, just them having that perspective, you know, that it's not just, you know, buying and selling houses. There's just so much more that, that encompasses what real estate, real estate is, you know, intellectual property, you know, just, just a lot. So yeah, I think we impact people in a lot of ways. And the younger we can do it, the better. Oh, getting close. No, sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't know it did that. I, didn't know, I thought it only did that on my screen. I didn't oh, know. Yeah. It I learned time. something new. Thank you. I'm going to try that next time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting you said, um, you know, intellectual real estate. You know, it's going to be interesting to see the, the, the difference in where the market goes after after we get out of this this um, where we are now and yeah. go into the new normal that we're going to face because it's never going to be the same again. Um, mm -hmm. It still blows my mind that in one week, 3.3 million people filed for unemployment in one yeah. week. Yeah. And those are the numbers that is documentable, you know, so it's more than that. Um, yeah. Um, the first week it was 3.3, 3, then now, the, then, then another week was 3.3 3 in one week in the millions. That, that was, I mean, it's super, super surpassed what took place from 2008 and 2010. And that two year time sp span, it was only not even a million. It was under, under over 600,000. It's yeah. just under 700,000. 
in the whole two year span of the real estate um, recession, you know, um, you know, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see the outcome of this. Um, I definitely, you know, encourage and um, individuals or those that um, have interest in real estate, if they thought about it, this is a good time to take the courses, especially even in New Jersey, with New Jersey now um, allowing for virtual classes to be yeah. um, an option. So if you're looking to take classes now, um, wow, that's a that's a great opportunity. You can do it right from, from the privacy of your own home. Yeah. Um, so we will be rolling out some classes real soon, something of making some things available, you know, um, yeah. maybe, maybe, um, yep. So roll out some classes. We could possibly partner up and doing some stuff. <clears throat> um, um, so I wanted to ask you, um, I, there's a question from the, from Facebook and what is, one of the questions is what, can you see the questions also? Um, no. Okay. Okay, so what advice would you give to first-time buyers during the social climate of today? Um, I think it's still a great time to purchase real estate. Absolutely. The interest rates are still lower than they have ever, ever been. Mm -hmm. And it's a process. So mm -hmm. people think, you know, some people look like, like they have 30 days, their lease expires in 30 days and they think they can find a house in 30 days. It takes longer than that. Yeah, true. That's a good point. <laughs> so it's a great time, you know, to make sure that your credit is in the right place. Um, the criteria, you know, the guidelines are going up. You know, they're being more selective about who gets loans now. So it's a little bit tighter. So you want to, if your credit score is not where it is, you can work on getting it to where it needs to be. Um, you can also kind of narrow down where you think you want to live. That's also a, a really big challenge is when people are not clear where they want to be, because there's lots of property still that's mm -hmm. available for sale. So I think it's still a great um, you know, market to be in, especially if you are gainfully employed. So if you're on unemployment right now, well, no, mm -hmm. but um, if you're, you know, gainfully employed, you're in um, an industry that's going to sustain itself uh, through the, the through where we are right now. Um, it's a great time to actually get into, you know, to get into some property. Um, your ability to see property is going to be uh, limited. So if you let's say you're already pre-qualified as a first time home buyer, um, some properties you just won't be able to see. Mm -hmm. on the side, but if the property is is vacant or if it's a situation where the owner um, has to move for you know whatever reasons maybe they're relocating for their job or some other reason um, and you know they make it available you know for people to see but I still think it's a great time to be considering real estate and um, yeah that would be yeah. my response no I agree yeah. huh no, I definitely. That, I was, yeah. I, yeah, I would definitely agree. It's a great time to buy. Um, interest rates are lower; it's still low. Um, don't see them going up anytime soon. Um, to take advantage of the opportunity because real estate bounces back, and it's in cycles. And this is one of the things that's not going anywhere. Even if you know, despite what we're facing. Um, you know, provided we live through it, those, you know, it's, it's definitely a serious time, you know, serious, it's serious what's going on, you know, um, provided, you know, <clears throat> um, I definitely, you know, and I'm a proponent of, of education. I, you know, that, you know, um, we always, always find ourselves bumping heads in CE classes or something somewhere, you know, before we, you know, um, met through, um, NARAB, you know, but, um, I definitely suggest that individuals find a way, not necessarily take a real estate course, but get educated and really yeah. educate yourself about the information um, and become informed about real estate. Because as you stated, it's not just selling homes. It's not about just, you know, there's commercial real estate, there's appraisals, there's home inspections. There's just vast real estate um, encompasses way, way more than just buying and selling homes. It's open, you know, and I really don't think that that's, you know, out there enough. You know, people, you know, I'm not sure if that's really um, known, 
but there's, it's just vast. And as you stated, it's the beginning of wealth. So if you know that you're going to have to rent somewhere, if you your lease is coming up for expiration and it's about to expire, um, even if you're six months out, because as you stated, it's not going to happen in 30 days. It's not like renting. You know, you can find start looking for an apartment in two months out, you know, and move into another apartment. Um, so real estate. And then you own it. You know, the tax benefits, you know, there's statistics. I'm preaching to the choir, you know, but there's statistics that show that children that grow up in homes that are um, that they own or that they're owned by their parents, they're much more, more stable. Um, you know, the effects of children that um, are affected by constant moving, the instability it creates and the thing. So it's definitely a time to buy. It's a buyer's market. Rates are low. Money is cheap. And um, if you can find the right deals, like you said, gainfully employed. So I second everything you, sta- you stated um, about the time to buy is still definitely now to purchase if you have the ability to do so. And um, get that first one so you can work on the second one, you know, work on the investment properties because your tax, there's tax tax benefits that, you know, write-offs and all those, pre- all that that you can get that come with owning a second piece of property after you, um, you know, get the one you own. Um, but it definitely starts with the one, the first one that you live in, especially if you're renting, you know, mm-hmm. with the rates are so low now, you could be paying less to, to own than you do to rent, you know, um, you know, in certain, have some places. Like yeah. Huh? I said, and have the write off, like you said. You yeah. Know. And the mortgage stops and the payment stops. It ends. You know, it's not in this. You're not paying someone else's mortgage. Um, so first time buyers, um, wherever you are, start now. So even if you're in the, if you're in the last month of your, of your lease, the first month of your lease, start now. Start the process. Start looking into it. Start educating yourself. Even if you don't want to start the process, if you're in a new lease, you got a year to go. Start educating yourself on it now. And then for the next time you're ready to um, get out of that place, you'll be moving you could be moving into something to purchase, to, to purchase something instead of um, paying someone else's mortgage. So start the education right from where you are. It's never too late. It doesn't matter. I, it don't matter how bad your credit is either. You know, first get a copy of your credit report because right. sometimes it may not be as bad as you think. Often you think, oh, I know it's bad. Those hospital bills, and those hospital bills, I know it was up in the thousands, 300,000. But, you know, mortgage companies, you can still after two years, you know, they're not they don't affect your credit as much. I know that was the case. I'm not sure now. And the mortgage industry, you know, changes a lot. Um, Yeah, we'll have a mortgage lender. Antron is going to do talk on mortgages next week. He'll be here. Yeah, he's he's definitely good. Yep, He's going to talk on some mortgages and um, we're going to just inform inform the public and the community on information. You can buy. You definitely can buy. Um, you definitely can purchase a home. Um, there's a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to seeing what the creative financing opportunities come up out of this um, this crisis that yeah. we're in. Um, yeah. So do you see this as a calling for you? As a calling? I definitely see uh, real estate as, an, as my real ministry. Estate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if that's because, you know, I, 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 I'm a preacher's daughter. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I'm a preacher's daughter. So, um, you know, I definitely have the love of God in me. And um, but even, you know, when I was in high school, I've always seemed to counsel people and uh, people feel comfortable uh, sharing with me mm-hmm. and, you know, whatever information that I have, you know, I share it freely mm-hmm. and I share it with love. And so, you know, it's a very stressful time when people are purchasing a home and they're opening up their life to you, you know? True. So it's a, a, a very, um, I don't want to say delicate, but, you know, that people entrust their lives to you. It's a very important decision and so it is a ministry, you know, and, and as people are it walking is. through the process, whatever is going on in their lives during that time, you know, definitely minister them through those periods. So, yeah. And, and so and that's not all real estate agents. So I'll just let me say that it's all real estate agents are not created equal. 
No, we're all different. We're all different. Um, they don't want to talk, you know, they won't talk to you about certain things and, you know, they set particular boundaries, but um, who I am, I just can speak for myself. It's, it, it's definitely a ministry for me, but my life is ministry, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm not the get in the pulpit kind of ministry. I don't mean it that way, but it's just a, being a life of of, of service. Of service. Yeah. No, that's what a minister, yeah, a minister does. He yeah. serves, right? That's just, yeah, and yeah. helping people in any way that I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, a minister serves. No, it's just interesting. What what came to mind when you said that is um, NARAP have um, a number of affiliates yeah. and um, Remby is the real estate manager, managers brokers institute is the property management affiliate. Yes. And after two of the designations, the CRM that you acquire, there's two designations. After two classes that you um, complete, mm -hmm. your, um, after you pass and go through the criteria, of course, pass and everything, you become a CRM. So it's a certified resident manager. Okay. And then you have two more classes before you become the CREM, right? The certified real estate manager. But the second portion of it is a resident manager. So like the doctors, you become a resident manager. So you're practicing and mm -hmm. you're constantly in the practice of it, you know, while you're doing it, you know, so it's not, it's something, you know, that was interesting to me when I, when I saw that. And, you know, it's a lot of similarities, you know, being Muslim and with NARAB for me and the numbers and the year, the dates, it's a lot of things that, you know, that, that hit me in a, in different you know, it was established and it was Detroit. Um, um, and I know it was Florida was the first. So there's a lot of similarities that surround NARAD <clears throat> as it relates to, you know, helping um, Black America become more homeowners, you know, um, mm -hmm. because, you know, it's stated when America has a cold, Black America has pneumonia, right? And, yeah. you know, it's not that you're um, negating anyone else, um, but, you know, just like in an airplane, mask first, you put the mask on yourself first, you know, as soon as the, the air mask drop, you put the mask on yourself first, and then you put it on the person next to you, give them help if they need help. So right. that's how I see NARAB as being. Um, mm -hmm. Education, hands down, I have not right. seen anything like no education that can, that can beat yeah. it. Um, we were talking, yeah. just talking about some of the, the classes that were never recorded that will never, you know, you're never going to see them again. You know, yeah. some of the information and it's, um, you know, that's what brings me to my book and why I'm writing uh, my book and it'll be out in a few shakes. Maybe it'll be soon. Yeah. Yep. Thank God much for that. Praise you to a lot for that. So it'll be in 30 to 45 days or 60 days. God willing. Yeah. yeah. Because that, yeah. um, you know, do you think that, um, at your peak, you know, of, you know, just for me, it's almost like at, you kind of start maybe because at your peak, I think it's the best time to get that information to individuals, you know, to write it down. I've always journaled and wrote and think, written things down and kind of, you know, documented things, but to get it out and you'd be surprised at who could use what you, what you know, I, you know, yeah. we'll take our information for granted, but you're a wealth of information, you know, mm -hmm. um, so, but, so what's your take on the commercial market, commercial real estate market? Anything? Wow. Yeah. And I have a question for you on a hundred black women. That was one thing. Cause I, you mentioned it before. I didn't know that that existed, but you tell oh, me really yeah, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Black women. yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> commercial market, I think is they're going in deep. I really mm. find, uh, What's happening is, especially in our communities, there are a lot of what's called opportunity zones and the commercial market, they are taking advantage of um, what's going on with vacant properties, with vacant land in our communities and a lot of building is going on. And uh, there's a lot of redistribution of wealth going on with uh, the, commercial, uh, the commercial market. So I think it's something that we need to pay attention to. Um, 
glad you said that. I'm going to do a do a do a call a class on opportunity zones to make that a yeah. topic to bring someone on that um Steve um in California is part of the commercial division. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he does a lot of the community zone opportunity zone stuff. We definitely should bring that information because like you said, it's happening in our communities, but we're not yeah. doing it. it. But we're not a part of it, you know, and we're not, you know, even being seasoned, you know, we're not a part of that opportunity, you know. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of like a dream too, because I, I want to develop, I want to build affordable housing, you know. And so that's a whole area that um, I think we need to pay more attention to so we can be the owners offering rentals as well as, you know, offering residential opportunities. Yeah. So opportunity zones and development. Um, yes. You know, yes. those are definitely a, um, great opportunities for, you know, our community. Um, yeah. Are you going to have um, Matthew on at some point? Matthew? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. Catch him on a pin up, get, get a hold of him and get a date from him for sure, because he, he's definitely, he has a lot of information on the development. He came here and um, they're supposed to be bringing a class back here. I'm not sure. I know they just did something in Washington, him and um, Cliff Turner. And, but I'm gonna definitely reach out to him and get him to speak on the development portion of it. And reach out to Steve on the opportunity zone information on the commercial real estate side. Yeah, yeah, so that's- yep. Hmm. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, <clears throat> so for Lionsgate, for the real estate, for your real estate, um, your real estate school, um, what is your target? You know, for I mean, how do you see that grow? Like, what is your what is your what's your vision for the real estate school portion of it? Is it something? You know, like what do you see? your vision for that? Is it just to educate more or is it a vehicle that you use? What, what's your vision for the real estate? Um, yeah, yeah. Lions, yeah, Lions View Academy. Did I say gate again? Yes. Yeah. I did. I was do that. <laughs> no, no. I, I said I wasn't going to do that on here. I said I wasn't going to do that one. I know. <laughs> maybe, right. maybe I'm going to be as big as Lions Gate one day. All right. <laughs> film studio, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Lions View will have a film component. You're prophesying into my future. Yeah, so. talking it into existence. That's it. Yeah, talking it into existence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Lions View Academy is really going to be uh, the pre licensing is the first step. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, the uh, really looking to see more people. One of the things that I found when I went through real estate school, you mm -hmm. know, it gives the book knowledge and the nuts and bolts, but it really <laughs> didn't cover how to apply what you learned. Absolutely. In, you know, in real ways. So mm -hmm. what's going to be different about Lion's View is the practicality of it, you know, to mm -hmm. really um, not just cover, you know, the information, you know, mm -hmm. the information a lot of nuts and bolts information, but also talk about how to apply certain things in the experience of real estate and also to, um, you know, give people tools that they can, you know, move forward, with, you know? So I think people think they get their real estate license and that's it, you know, they uh -huh. take the test and they're ready and really they're not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, near. It's like a prerequisite. It's like going to school. You know, you go to school, but it, people don't tell you how math, English, and science help plays into you. the real world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how it plays into the real world. So I think that's mm -hmm. one of the, you know, one of the components of the academy that will be uh, a little bit different. Yeah. No, that's good, and that's good. I can see that helping a lot of people for sure. Seeing that benefit, being of a benefit to a lot of people because I see the same thing. Um, you know, and especially when you're in front of students and you're, you, you can tell, you can gauge it by questions and certain things you see. And it's like, whoa, okay, I have my license. Now what? You see that. And then you see that there's a need for it. You know, there's a definite need for um, classes that's going to 
streamline and help people to get to the next phase of it. And that may be that may be the cause of why it's a lot of uh, people with license that's not practicing. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. they watch so. too much TV. They think it's like it is on television. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Definitely a little bit more yeah. to it. Know that it's possible. Like what's on television is possible. It but is it's a lot of. You know, you got to put the work in. You just yeah. it doesn't happen without putting the work in. No, it's not gonna happen without the work. Definitely mm -hmm. still the best business to be in. Um, definitely recommend that you buy some real buy some of the land yourself, buy some real estate yourself. That's another thing that I see happening that that is not enough of that going on on real estate professionals owning enough real estate. Right. Um mm -hmm. that just never that never I never really understood that, you know, it's almost like a, you definitely should be owning, find a way to own, you know, some of, some of this land and some of, some real estate as well, as long as you're doing it. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things that I try to teach in my class and really make it a point to think outside of the box and, box and teach outside of the box. And every time we come to one of those points in in um, junctures in one of those chapters that mm -hmm. can turn into a business um, mm -hmm. opportunity, we stay there for a while and visit it and make it a part because it's, it's, it's like planting the seed, you know, and, you know, there's a number of times that, you know, with New Jersey, for one thing, a perfect example, with the tax, the benefit of buying tax liens, you know, mm -hmm. that after two years, the tax lien, if the owner doesn't pay it, um, you know, the property, you can foreclose on the property. That's a big business, you know? Um, so, you know, almost every class, that chapter, we, 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 we talk about that a lot because that's a business opportunity for some, you know, and it really drives home the fact that real estate is not just buying and selling homes and driving people around in the car and just one aspect of it. There's a whole vast, um, big open field, you know, that you can tap into with real estate. Yeah. And there's so many opportunities, you know, that go with it. And anything cookie, cookie cutter, I really don't want any part of it. Anything status quo, I don't want to do it. We want to do something different. And because real estate is a fluid, like you said, and it's an ever-changing market, and it's constantly right. changing. And one of the most important things is to be um, – start um, – becoming comfortable and embracing that change is going to happen. And it's always forever changing. And those that can, you know, roll with the changes, you know, tend to do well and make it, you know, so, um, you know, just wanted to, you know, talk about, you know, for as far as the classes is concerned, you know, I really always want to make it something that someone can tangibly utilize, something that they can walk away with and start applying day one, Monday morning. You know, you take the class on, you know, you got the weekend off Monday morning. You can take what you just learned from the class and start using it and making it make money for you. Um, yeah. And that's really, you know, and I learned that with, from NARAP, taking NARAP classes. And yeah. I took my first RIMBY class. I was able to go back to work and implement it immediately. You know, property management, you know. So, I mean, those are classes that are useful. For people, you know, people earn it, you know, it makes it worth it, worth the money you spend on it. So, yes. so like you said, just to be some, to do something different. So one last question, I don't want to take too much more of your time. Really appreciate you for coming and thank you for your time. Thank and, you for inviting me. <laughs> oh man, it's a pleasure for sure. And I would definitely look forward to, looking forward to the work that you're doing and maybe even partnering with doing some stuff, you know, you know, we can put together some, some some CE. We're not in a CE cycle for New Jersey right now, but um, you know, who knows with people being home, they may want to get it out the way. Um, and with the new technology, it's a way to get it done, you know, at a much faster pace and cover a lot more ground, you know. Um, so maybe we could partner up with some things. I'm definitely always a proponent of working together and you know, pooling the resources, you know, and you know. It doesn't matter that, you know, we, there's enough of this for everybody, for everybody to make it work, you know? Indeed. Um, so what would you like your legacy to be? Wow. Uh, my statement is kind of, I'm a conduit, you know, and I'm a conduit through which 
my dreams and the dreams of others are actualized into reality. Mm -hmm. And um, if I can touch someone in a way that has them see their greatness, be about their greatness, and manifest their greatness, then I feel like, you know, my touching, you know, my contacting, my interaction um, with that life was was a good thing. And so wow. that's that's the legacy that I want to leave. So if you if you met me at any time, you'll remember the way that I touched your life. Yeah. No, that's big. That's big. And I can definitely see that because you're always giving for sure. Always have um something to share and offer for um, for others in a selfless way, you know, and a sharing information. Um, um, so how can people get a hold of you and reach you in your platforms and how could anyone, you know, how could, how can you be reached? Okay. okay. Um, you can reach me at info, I-N-F-O at lionsviewrealty.com. That's L-Y. O N S V is in victory, I E W realty.com. That's my email. Uh, my phone number, I think, is on the screen. I don't know if you can see it. It's 856 209 0905. And um, my website Lions is View, Claire. not Lions Gate, y'all. Lions View. <laughs> Lions View, yeah. <laughs> Lions View Realty, yes. <laughs> and um, it's uh, clara.lionsviewrealty.com. It's the website. So. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and your position now in um, NARAB is what, and what is that? How, so if South Jersey, for those, um, your sphere of influence that sees this or may, you know, be in the area, your South Jersey chapter is what? Yeah. Uh, so it's sjnarab.com. And you can go to our website, sjnarab.com. That's N-A-R-E-B, S-J-N-A-R-E-B.com. And you can uh, do membership on the website. You can see what we've got going on. Uh, we've actually been doing some virtual classes in this season for um, our membership that have been pretty powerful mm -hmm. and uh, playing some of the classes that we did. I think the last one we did was on fair housing, landlord tenant rights. And we have the, the video for that because there was a... Um, a company that actually taped us and put us on their show. So we have, wow. now have the video, the video feed. So we're going to put that up so everybody can get that information. Was that but, pre, um, was yes. that pre, pre, that was that planned, the, the company to do it, or they just happened to do it? Um, it was planned for them to be there. Yeah. One of our members set that up for them to, to come and they uh, filmed the entire meeting and they interviewed um, our president, Avery. And um, so his his interview is out there. And also, I just got the feed for the entire uh, event. Wow. And so it's really great. Um, I actually do the introduction, which is the history of NARAB. So it's a really good overview of what uh, NAREB is about. And also um, our eight initiatives that um, are in place currently. So it's a good overview of the organization. And then the information about fair housing, about uh, landlord tenant rights. Um, in fact, I got a letter today from one of the young ladies who was there because she's having some challenges. So I'll hopefully be able to assist her um, with what she's going through. Um, so with her landlord? Uh, yeah. 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 So yeah. we have a couple of minutes, if you don't mind. You want to tell us what NAREB, the overview of how it began and what it started. So for those that don't know and maybe looking at this and have, don't have a clue as to what is NAREB, who is NARAB, what are they talking about? I don't know. You know, yeah. what... <laughs> uh, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers uh, is the one of the oldest trade organizations that was put into effect in 1947. Um, and we actually went to court with NAR, National Association of Realtors, for the name, and we won. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, and NAR is the National Association of Realtors. Um, we call ourselves Realtists, 
as a distinction separate from realtors. Uh, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers has been responsible for a lot of the things that we enjoy, like the 3% down program is a result of our advocacy efforts. You know, uh, in the past, people had to put down 20% to purchase a property. So mm -hmm. the N is for networking. So we have, uh, as Maurice and I were talking about earlier, affiliates across the United States, other real estate professionals that we network with, which allows us the opportunity to do uh, real estate nationally. Mm -hmm. um, the H for advocacy, we uh, partner with legislators. Uh, in this case, we have uh, Senator Meeks, who has the DREAM program coming up where you can kind of put money away to own a home. It's new legislation that we're getting behind him on. So there's a whole advocacy things where um, on a legislative basis, we provide things that help people, um, you know, laws that affect lending, laws that affect housing. You know, our goal overall is democracy and housing for everyone. And mm -hmm. so advocacy is about making sure there's democracy and housing for everyone. The R is for relationships. And we have relationships with our clients. We have relationships with other real estate professionals. So not only real estate people, but home inspectors, appraisers, um, people who are into roofs, contractors, you know, investors. So our relationships cover the gamut. And Maurice spoke about our different affiliate arms that we provide education in. Um, in our relationships. And we have people who are members who uh, might be in, in um, uh, what do you call it? Real estate under the ground, mortuaries, <laughs> which is also real estate, you know, all you right. under the ground, you got real yeah, estate under that. the ground. Yeah. So all of that is real estate. And then an ease for education. I would say NARAB is the best real estate education that I have received. Yeah. I would not be the, the real estate professional that I am without all of the training, the courses, the information that I've learned at our various conferences, at our meetings, um, hands down, yeah. which gets to last B, which is for business. And we yeah. are about the business of ensuring one, democracy and housing, ensuring that Black folks specifically have an opportunity to purchase property because it wasn't always the case, especially in 1947 when right. the National Association of Real Estate Brokers got started. You could not purchase property at all, and you definitely couldn't purchase property in certain places. And so, or you couldn't even work, you know, for people who are professionals like Maurice and myself, you couldn't work in uh, certain areas. So the National Association of Real Estate Brokers has brought us from that era to 2020, which is a new vision, um, a new way of doing business and ensuring that we have opportunity to purchase a home wherever we want to have uh, property, wherever we want to own property, to make sure that people are educated and informed, to make sure that people are taken care of inside of their real estate transaction and that you have resources available to you to not only do the job of real estate, but to service those in real estate. So that's in it in a nutshell. Yeah. Thank you for that. No, and I'm sure that people um, definitely got something out of that because a lot of, um, and there are, I'm going to name the affiliates. Two things you mentioned that I wanted to, to add to is you mentioned the real estate underground. Um, but I want to add to the new real estate, which is the internet real estate yes. and finding our footprint in the real estate on this web, because now this is a whole nother platform that we can apply that real estate acumen to, you know, yeah. what we've learned that acumen to uh, navigating to, um, especially now it's a perfect training. We're in a training boot camp right now because, mm -hmm. you know, we should be putting, we could be putting together information to tap into that real estate that's on the internet. The other part that you mentioned, well, I wanted to name the affiliates that NA, NAREB have, um, and we have the contractors division. Um, 
and Tom Holmes is the president of that. Um, we have Bilal Sharif is the president of the Young Realtors Division. Um, Women's Council is Women's Council. Uh, Chandra Ware. Um, I'm just going to mention the, the affiliates because I'm not sure if um, all of the um, presidents are or the leaders are current or not, but then you have um, the Developers Council. These are all different affiliates and different entities that is within NARAB. And that's the, one of the other things that makes NARAB different is the, any of the other trade associations that I'm familiar with, they don't have the gambit of the contractor, the inspector, the title company, the insurance company. Those are not part of, you know, to be an affiliate member or to become members of it. So it broadens your network of, you know, of, a, of for your ability to be able to sell real estate across the country. Because technically, you technically can, you know, you know. And um, so there's uh, Ray Carlisle. He's uh, NARAB Investment Division. Um, NID, he's the president of that division. Um, Home Buyers Counsel Counseling is uh, James Haynes. Steve Patterson, he's the president um, of, of the C Commercial Investment Division. I know that for sure. He's definitely the president. So you have commercial, home buyers. You have um, NID, hands down. The, um, I mean, housing counselors, hands down, there's no housing counselors that are, that can equal to them. Not biased, but it's just facts. Um, yeah. Because one of the benefit, one of the reasons is because all of the counselors that come through NID are real estate professionals, mm -hmm. as opposed to re when you, um, not all HUD counselors are real estate professionals. Right. So that adds to um, what you're getting in the service of what you're getting because they know the real estate side of things. Um, so that's one of the benefits of what it is that you get. Myra Lillard, she's not, no, she's not the current president of the appraisers division, which is Nesra, N-S-R-E-A, the appraisers divi appraisal division. And then you have RIMBY, which is a national, uh, which is real estate, um, real estate management brokers institute. Um, I happen to be the current president of that. And L.J. Jennings is the current president of the sales division of NARAB. So there's a, a slew of affiliates. So you can get in and uh, and get in and get on whatever train and whatever path you like to get in. So it's not just, you know, just selling real estate. It's it, it's open. There's a, a vast um, wealth of information and wealth of training and, 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 and information that you can definitely benefit. And, um, you know, so we'll definitely plan is to get all of them affiliates on and to bring them before you. We would like to get that information out to you. So if you, you know, everything real estate. So um, Clara, again, I want to thank you for your, for your time. Thank you for your service. Thank you for all you do. And um, I look forward to chiming in and, 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 and hearing from and benefiting from what you present and present. And thanks again. And that, that is it for us for this show and this chapter, this episode of Everything Real Estate. And we look forward to um, our next guest. Antron Daly has popped up on my, um, right just now, just popped up on <laughs> for, um, yeah. he'll be, yeah, he'll be um, going to have us, he'll be going to talk more than just with Antron Daly on our next episode. Thanks again, Clara. Appreciate you and your time. Thank you. And do you have any parting words or anything you want to, would you could leave with our audience and uh, the floor is yours for, to take us home with, take us out. Uh, well, everything is for a season. You yeah. Know? Everything is for a season. And so if we keep that in mind, especially when things are difficult and things are hard, um, you know, my prayers are going out to everyone sending love and light to uh, anyone and everyone, because we're mm -hmm. all affected by this season. Absolutely. But just to remember, you know, this season will pass. You know, there are always down days and up days. And just to focus on uh, the good. So I just want to send love and light. Thank you for that. With that being said, thank you. God bless. And we'll talk to you soon.
Okay, peace. Peace.